do? The Institute is uh, chartered to form a community, develop a community, to evaluate the potential of the universe to harbor life beyond Earth. And so we work with the uh, biology community, with the astroscience community, with the geoscience community, and bring those communities together to collaborate to address these questions about the potential of the universe to harbor life beyond Earth. The, the question of can, what, what is the potential of the universe to harbor life beyond Earth is a, a series of scientific questions. It's, it's a, a question of how does life begin? Uh, what is necessary for life to begin and to be sustained? What are, what are the limits of life? What are the possibilities of life? We only have one example of life on Earth. All life on Earth uses the same biochemistry. Well, the biochemistry of life doesn't have to be that biochemistry. It could be quite different biochemistry. So one has to understand what is the potential of life given that we only have one example of life on Earth to study. And then there's the question of what constitutes a habitable environment and where do they fall? So one of the most difficult questions to answer in a sense is how did we go from non-living to living? That's an enormous transition. And there are some people who believe that Given the right circumstances, that transition happens very readily, and there are other people who believe that that transition may be a very rare event. So understanding the answer to that question is one of the most important things for understanding whether or not life might be common beyond Earth, or whether in fact uh, a planet with life is actually very rare. We really don't know fish and We have people who study life on Earth, and probably half of the scientists in the Astrobiology Institute in one way or another study life on Earth. It, it is, after all, the only example of life that we have available to study. We also have many scientists who study the evolution of life on Earth. How did we get from the time when we have the earliest evidence of life, which is perhaps as long ago as 3.8 billion years, how did life and the planet evolve together uh, from then till now? And this is part of the uh, developing an understanding of what is the potential for life to exist and evolve on some other world. So we have people who study uh, what Earth has to tell us about life in the cosmos. We study the cosmos. We study planets forming around other stars. We, we study material in interstellar molecular clouds where you have some of the organic precursors of life being formed. We have people who study meteorites and the processing of interstellar material in circumstellar disks to understand what kind of material could get delivered to a habitable planet around another star and what kind of material actually did get delivered to the Earth and Mars and Venus. So we, I think we can say with some confidence, thanks to the successful launch of the Kepler mission, that we are going to announce relatively soon, within the next couple of years or three years, the discovery of Earth-sized planets in the habitable zones of their parent stars. Assuming that those planets are there, Kepler will discover some of them. So that is going to be a major step forward. Now, being able to actually observe those planets directly will be very, very difficult, and that's not going to happen for some time. But uh, one thing that I always find is that the scientific community is very ingenious and they come up with ways of making measurements that we think today are very, very difficult to make. And so I expect that we, there will be some very exciting results as we discover these planets, but I'm not going to make a prediction about when we're actually going to be able to measure the characteristics other than the orbital characteristics and the size of an Earth-like planet around another star. Thank you.